Good morning. Welcome to the new night and to the Dolores Huerta uh, Apartments ribbon cutting. This is an exciting day for us in CD9 and in our city. Good morning, dear friends, colleagues, esteemed guests. Our Honorable Mayor is with us. You're going to hear from uh, in a minute. Cynthia McLean Hill, President of the Board of the Department of uh, Water and Power is with us, also a friend in our district. Uh, but I just want to thank everyone for attending today and sharing this very special day. Uh, as the councilman here, I'm honored to help inaugurate the Dolores Welter Apartments. In fact, uh, our office decided that uh, we should name this complex after this legendary labor leader in recognition of her humanitarian work, not only in our city, but really throughout our nation. And two years later, this day has finally come. Well, before we get started, we're going to have a, an exciting pledge from our students. We've got the students from the um, Delos Worth Elementary School right around the corner there on 31st. Uh, and so let me, I want to introduce uh, Nadine Escalante and Jose Ortega. Come on up. Our two students who are going to lead us in the pledge. Please stand. Oh. Put your right hand over your heart. And begin. Ready? Okay, let's start. I pledge allegiance to, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Thank you. Let's give it up for Jacob and Nadine. <laughs> okay, we have another wonderful treat this morning. You thought that was it? No. We got another one for you. We're going to uh, welcome some very talented kindergarten students, also from the Dolores Huerta Elementary School, uh, who are going to sing It's a Beautiful Day. So come on down. All right. Here. Let's give it up for our kids. As we all know, this uh, rallying cry, Si Se Puede, uh, was created by the Honorable Dolores Huerta, who in fact changed her plan so she could be with us today. Her message, though, of justice, perseverance, and hope is what led the United Farm Works to create lasting changes that improve the human, human condition for workers in our city as a, in our society as a whole. Dolores, thank you so much for your commitment to our communities, our nation, and most importantly, our people. I'm truly honored to stand with you as we continue to fight for human rights. As we all know, this includes housing and protecting are most vulnerable. The new Dolores Huerta Apartments will feature 39 units of permanent supportive housing, another notch, Mayor, uh, in our efforts to com combat the homelessness emergency. Homelessness in Los Angeles is, has proven to be a daunting task, but in the face of adversity, that's what we continue to say. Si se puede. My office has led the way in providing affordable housing in the city with District 9 on track to build 4,500 units within the next four years. We're headed in the right direction, and we're thankful now to have the support of our courageous mayor, courageous with a capital C, 
Mayor Karen Bass and getting Angelinos off the streets. As previously stated, this community here has been two years in the making. And my staff, along with many other partners, have worked diligently to make this day possible. I want to thank Deborah LaFunch, LaFunchy, CEO of uh, D SDS Capital, for collaborating with RMG Housing to bring this wonderful development to the night. You're going to be hearing from Deborah in a minute. But let's give her a hand now. Yeah. SDS's efforts uh, have also led to the creation of the SDS Supportive Housing Fund, which is a first of its kind, first of its kind, privately equity fund for PSH projects. The creation of the Dolores Huerta Apartments is proof that when the public and private sector come together, we can better serve the people who need it most. We're looking at this project as a model to explore ways to work collaboratively, uh, as we did here, and to do that in the future. This development was put together rather quickly and cost effectively thanks to its modular design. Costs were dramatically brought down to uh, from $600,000 a unit to $200,000 per unit. Again, thanks to the uh, teamwork with this with, with crate modular. Representatives from uh, some of the investors in the supportive housing fund are here, and I just want to take a moment uh, to acknowledge their role in making the fund's vision a reality. The city of LA thanks you for your contributions and dedication to providing quality housing to those formerly unhoused neighbors. And so I just want to personally right now thank uh, the the lenders that, that were involved in this project, uh, Kaiser Permanente, Synchrony Bank, Ally Bank, Charles Schwab Bank, Pacific Premier Bank, East West Bank, First Citizens Bank and Trust Company, the Weingart Foundation, First Republic Bank, Western Alliance Bank, Hudson Pacific Properties, California Community Foundation, the California Wellness Foundation, Annenberg Foundation, Fidelity Investments Charitable Gift Fund, the Royal Roy and the Patricia Disney Foundation, and Susan Disney Lord. Let's give all of these partners a hand, please. Your contributions have directly made an impact and will open the doors for more projects like the Dolor Dolores Huerta Apartments to uplift our most marginalized brothers and sisters. I'd like to also take time to thank Veronica Lewis of the Homeless Outreach Program Integrated Care System, otherwise known as HOPEX. <laughs> HOPEX is providing wraparound services to the new residents right here. And we all know how important that is. Housing is important, but we also have to have services. Uh, sensitive and, uh, uh, and complete, and that's what Hopix provides. It's a leading homeless agency, not just in South LA, but really throughout our, our city. And again, they're going to be able to pro help provide uh, a quality life for our neighbors. Getting more affordable housing cost effectively in, in our city is certainly is no easy feat, but I'm glad that we have a mayor that from day one uh, has committed herself to addressing the homelessness crisis with urgency and compassion. Her executive directives and more recent, the $1.3 billion proposed budget for homelessness and housing is really gonna make a difference in getting Angelinos off the street. And that's just what we need, don't you agree? So thank you, Mayor, for tackling this crisis head on. I know that together we're gonna to create a cleaner, safer, healthier, happier Los Angeles. Uh, but now it's my distinct honor and pleasure to welcome our mayor, the Honorable Karen Bass. Good morning, everyone. And thank you, Councilman Curran Price, because you've been such an outstanding leader in the 9th District. And I tell you, I'm the one that has the privilege and honor of going to all the ribbon cuttings. <laughs> for all of the work that you've done over the last few years. And so we need to make this a regular occurrence. I wanna thank the children from Dolores Huerta Elementary School. It is wonderful to be here with you. They are so cute at that age. <laughs> and it's also, I think, so appropriate to name this building after one of my personal sheroes and really a national treasure 
and so proud that she's a Californian, Dolores Huerta. <clears throat> I was uh, just in Sacramento celebrating your birthday, so I do look forward to going from ribbon cutting to ribbon cutting and event to event with such an incredible leader. I also want to thank Deborah LaFranchi, the founder and CEO of SDS Capital and SDS Capital Group, John Yamamoto, Veronica Lewis, and your incredible leadership of Hopix. You know, one of the things that I always tell people, especially when you go to a lot of different areas, people don't realize that there are community leaders like Veronica and other leaders of nonprofit housing development corporations who know how to address homelessness, who know what the solution is. Our challenge has just been being able to reach the scale of the problem and addressing the problem from every level, comprehensively, preventing people from falling into homelessness. When they do fall into homelessness, getting them off the streets immediately into interim housing and eventually into permanent supportive housing. And so I'm happy to say that when this building is totally occupied, that some of the residents will be residents from the Inside Safe uh, program that we have launched. We are proposing in the budget to expand this. We want to get to the point where we have outreach workers and interim housing all across the city so that one day in Los Angeles we can see the end to street homelessness. The way we have been working with Inside Safe in collaboration completely with every member of the city council, we work with them to identify which encampments to address and then work with them to identify where the interim housing should be. And so it's very exciting to see this building getting ready for full occupancy, and it is a beautiful example of a public-private partnership. And this is what we need to see tenfold or 20-fold all across our city. And so I am hoping that the executive directives that we've signed to expedite the building, to address publicly owned property, and all of the other obstacles that make it take so long to build housing, that all of that can help us reach scale. So thank you very much for the opportunity to be We're here with you today. Oh, <laughs> sorry about that. My next responsibility is to introduce the CEO and founder, SDS Capital, Deborah LaFanchi. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. This is a really big day for SDS, our first project funded by the SDS Supportive Housing Fund with RMG. Uh, last week, when I was thinking about what I wanted to say today, I had a very different set of talking points, frankly. Um, the passing of my former boss, Mayor Richard Reardon, last week really changed things for me. Um, it really made me reflect on my times back in the 90s as I was in his administration and how we approached some pretty daunting challenges back then. And frankly, I think today is, is on par with the types of challenges we have relative to homelessness. Um, and it, sometimes it seemed insurmountable, insurmountable as we were losing our companies, jobs were disappearing, violence was going up, but we achieved success. Um, there was a very proactive spirit. And I am very confident um, despite the numbers we all see in the news, that we're going to be successful in tackling the homeless crisis here in Los Angeles because of the leadership uh, that we're seeing and how Angelinos are stepping up. Um, the lessons I learned while working for Mayor Reardon also, I think, uh, directly led to this today in terms of SDS being involved in the financing. I was just 26 years old when I went to work with him. I wanted my career to focus on alleviating poverty. That's what I had focused all my studies on. And I was thrilled to um, land a position in the Reardon administration. And the mayor had a big mandate, just like our current mayor has a mandate on homelessness, uh, certainly with the voters. Back then it was jobs and crime. Today it's homelessness. And one thing for those of you who may have known Mayor Reardon and, and what he did, uh, he was a mayor of action. He was brought in to tackle the challenges of the day. And he really embedded in all of his staff, make it happen. 
you know, this is an administration of action. And his main mantra to all of us, which I took to heart, I'm not, I think he meant us to take it to heart, which was don't ask permission, ask forgiveness. If you see something that needs to happen, make it happen, go for it. Um, I was really lucky because one of the initiatives, our coffers were pretty empty <laughs> in, the, in the mid 90s. Uh, the city was having some tough times with revenues, but we needed money for economic development. And we decided to launch a very innovative initiative that's still around today, Genesis LA. And, I, and they're doing great work. And I was tapped on the team to help structure and launch it and, and later became the CEO. And I learned very explicitly because our goal was to tap private sector capital to invest in, our, in LA's um, distressed communities. And I, I learned that we could use private sector capital in the battle against poverty. And I completely pivoted my career at that point. I started SDS Capital Group over 20 years with the sole mission of engaging the private sector in this challenging battle against poverty. And today we have over a billion three in different impact funds around the country. I have to say though, despite the different funds on our platform, the SDS Supportive Housing Fund is the single most important to me. Um, I'm an Angelino. My family and I every day drive by the same encampments that you all drive by. It's heart-wrenching, it's tragic, and uh, having this fund and having this project here today where 39 individuals will soon have transformative housing is incredibly uh, special. Just as uh, my career started with taking action uh, and, and, and an administration where that was the mantra, this, this initiative that SDS and RMG Housing have put together is built upon action. RMG, their, their driving action has been uh, that seven years ago, Tim Roth and Moza Rowey back there started looking at how they would move away from commercial real estate development and convert their careers into developing nothing but permanent supportive housing and doing it at a lower cost than anyone else. Today, we have over 760 units in construction or completed and on average, it's $230 per unit, land and construction. It's unbelievable. That's action. The action SDS has taken is our team uh, did an amazing job of seeing this opportunity, particularly Kip Hamilton, bringing the opportunity to my attention. And we saw that we could scale this model. If we could get the private sector engaged in funding RMG, they wouldn't just do a few deals each year. We could be doing five to seven to 10. Uh, so this is very, very exciting uh, that we were able to do this. Ultimately, our projections were with our $150 million fund, we would finance 1,800 units of permanent supportive housing, predominantly in Los Angeles. Our investors took action. Without our investors, this doesn't exist. They're the oxygen we breathe in this model. They stepped up into a completely unproven uh, financial structure. Nobody has ever had a fund like this using private sector capital, market rates of return for permanent supportive housing. They took a leap of faith with us. Many of them are in, in, in this audience and I um, am deeply grateful to all of them. Yes, please. <laughs> Thank you. Councilman Kerm Price, uh, a man of action, he saw the need for someone to step in and build this. He reached out to RMG and SDS. We underwrote it and improved the investment at SDS within 45 days and an additional 60 days, we closed the transaction with the city. So that is action on this public-private partnership. We all work together to make it happen. And of course, Dolores Huerta. We wanted to name this project for a leader of action. And no one exemplifies that more than Dolores Huerta, who has lived in this district and serves as an inspiration to all of us seeking to make a difference. And, and uh, we tried to live up to your name by making this um, a very high quality development you could be proud of. And of course, the mayor. This is a mayor of action. I have to say she is confronting tremendous challenges, over 40,000 homeless in the city, over 60,000 in the county, 
53% of the country's unhoused population is here in California. We need action. In just a few months being in office, she has had not just important words that she has said, but those words have been backed up. One of her first initiatives within days was to announce a state of emergency so she would have more ability to move faster in dealing with the homeless crisis. A few days later, she addressed what is one of our biggest challenges. She issued an executive directive to expedite permitting for all permanent supportive housing and affordable housing in the city of LA. That literally has been our biggest challenge. We've had to add six to eight months to every one of our projects be just, just to get through, through the process. Um, we have seen m major change in just the last 60 days. I have to um, commend the city departments for heeding the mayor's leadership and following up with it. Uh, the expediting we have seen and, and other developers I have talked to in this space, it has been noticeable. It's been pretty immediate. Um, I do want to uh, just thank the departments and people involved, uh, Chief Mercedes Marquez, Deputy Mayor Jenna Hornstock, Deputy Mayor Kevin Keller. We've had team members from Azeen Khan Malik, Melissa Alofatuli, I hope I got your last name, Melissa. Apologies if I, I messed up a bit. Uh, and Joe Lucky, uh, front lines, blocking and tackling to get these through the departmental process, permits, inspections, and uh, clearances. In addition, we love, we love the new DWP powerhouse program. We have had immediate results with that. Commissioner Hill and Emil are here. Uh, we want to say that uh, we're so thankful um, for this partnership that the public sector is putting in place with permanent supportive housing developers around the city. The city family members are part of the solution to this. We need your help. We can go faster. We can build more. And I do have um, a final the building and safety. I also want to note has been a great partner in moving through the process. Um, so we see it, Mayor. You're making a difference already. Your leadership is inspiring people to be part of this. Um, today we are here to celebrate this building. 39 individuals will soon be moving in next week and the coming weeks. And we still have this tremendous challenge. We still have 40,000 homeless. It can seem overwhelming to me and I'm sure it can seem overwhelming to all of you. But we are on the right path and we will be successful under the mayor's leadership. But I do wanna say, just as it was with Mayor Reardon, the mayor can't, mayors can't do it on their own. Uh, we, are, we are all Angelinos. Our, Angelino, uh, our, our fellow Angelinos need our help. And it really takes all of us, it takes all of us to use our skills, our relationships, our capacities, and our leadership to lead and support efforts that are trying to make a difference in the city of LA. Only when we're all part of the solution will this really work, but I know it will. I wanna thank you for supporting us today in our efforts. This has been a long journey, and we're so excited um, that, that we're here to celebrate um, the trans transformation 39 people will soon have. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, now I'd like to introduce someone who represents a, an investor that without them, I think our fund would have been stuck at 20 million. And I, I say that uh, ser seriously. Uh, we're actually very fortunate. I forgot to mention, I forgot to mention one of my announcements actually that originally this fund was 150 million. We had been closed for over a year at that level. It was supposed to be done in terms of fundraising. We were putting our money out so quickly that we went back to our investors about six months ago and said, if you will let us open the fund up again, we believe we can raise more money and build more units. They unanimously approved, and I want to announce today that our fund is now 185 million as of last week. 
And now instead of 1,800 units, we will be financing 2,500 units or more. And if we get through the city process faster, even more than that. And Kaiser Permanente stepped up uh, in this model. Uh, they're a $50 million investor. And COVID was slamming the country. Our hospitals were full uh, in 2021 and we had not closed with them. And we had our conversation and they said, Debbie, despite COVID, we are doubling down. Homelessness is likely to get worse. We need more solutions. They stepped up, they closed in the middle of the crisis and they propelled us so that we were on the trajectory to hit that original 150 million. I wanna uh, welcome John Yamamoto, Vice President of Kaiser Permanente. Uh, thank you so much, John. Thank you, thank you. Well, what a beautiful day in LA. Um, so thank you, Debbie, and good morning, everyone. And on behalf of Kaiser Permanente, it's, it's an honor to join Mayor Bass and Councilmember Price and uh, Debbie and the SDS team and RMG Housing, uh, Veronica Lewis of, of Hopix, and of course, uh, Ms. Ms. Huerta. Um, so for 20, 75 years, Kaiser Permanente's social mission has been to improve the health of our members and the communities in which they live, work, and play. And as a nonprofit integrated healthcare system, Kaiser Permanente's main priority is to provide high quality, affordable healthcare and achieve equitable health outcomes. And in fact, in Southern California, we care for nearly 5 million people and more than 20% of the residents of Los Angeles County. And yet, and yet as vitally important as health coverage and healthcare services are, good health does not start in a medical office. We strongly believe that the opportunity for good health begins and is cultivated in community. Healthy communities produce healthier people and healthy communities have critical necessities like access to quality and safe housing, economic opportunity, food security, education, access to community resources and social supports and a safe and healthy environment. And that's why to fulfill our social mission to improve the health of our members and the communities we serve, we need to collaborate with community partners, public sector and private sector, to invest in and build healthier communities. Communities where everyone has access to housing, because simply put, having a safe place to call home is fundamental to good health. And that's why Kaiser Permanente made a $50 million social impact investment into SDS and RMG Housing's innovative approach to produce permanent supportive housing, high quality permanent supportive housing at a lower cost, faster, and with a long-term commitment to keep it affordable. So on behalf of Kaiser Permanente, I want to thank again and applaud Mayor Bass and Council Member Price for making housing and reducing homelessness a signature issue in the city of Los Angeles, a top priority. And I also want to, th to thank Debbie LaFranchi and RMG Housing for turning their vision into reality uh, at the Dolores Huerta Apartments. It's so beautiful. And together through this wonderful partnership, we're advancing health, equity, justice and community so that everybody has an opportunity to thrive. And we're immensely proud to have played our role in making this happen. And we certainly wish the new residents uh, of this building health and happiness. Thank you. And it's my honor now to introduce uh, Veronica Lewis, the director of Hopix. Thank you so much. Good morning. Innovation, creativity, political will, significant investment, the willingness to just do it, thoughtful strategy, bold leadership. These are all many of the key ingredients that it is going to take to solve homelessness. And so for that reason, I'm so proud to have worked in collaboration with everybody you see sitting here today. And so thank you, RMG, for your creativity team, Tim and Motobi, among some of the first developers to try these modular units, to try these crates, to SDS, Debbie, 
Kaiser and all the other investors for creating the supportive housing fund because the, pri the private capital to do this is so critical, not only to reduce the time it takes for developers to have to try to blend all this funding, but also to remove some of the restrictions that often come along with public funding for supportive housing. Thank you to Council Member Price for his very clear and intentional leadership and strategy to bring thousands of these types of units online in Council District 9 as well as South LA and to the city departments, we heard DWP, Building and Safety, for getting creative and starting to remove some of the red tape to expedite these processes. To my team at Hopix, to Tia and Julio, for getting creative in terms of how to figure out how to bring the subsidies to this site and, and get the folks inside. And naturally to our courageous Mayor, Mayor Bass, who within just less than 150 days has done some really transformative things that is going to allow us to expedite projects like this. And so thank you so much for all that you've done. Two years ago, we stood here surrounded by dirt. And that was the groundbreaking. And at that time, I had the honor to meet Dolores Horta. And I'm proud to say the shovel that we used to break the dirt that you signed is still in my office. And I walk past it every time I go in my office and it's encouraging. But it's fitting that this building is named after her because people having to live in squalor on the street is a justice issue. People not having access to affordable housing or economic stability is a housing justice and an economic justice issue and so it's so fitting that a pioneer for justice is the namesake of this building. Hopix will be here on site um, every day providing support for people that are going to be tenants of this beautiful building but the work didn't start there. We have a significant amount of outreach that happens to engage folks and build trust so that they will trust us and come indoors but most of the time when people are living outdoors or when they're living in temporary housing, the housing crisis is the very thing that is most prevalent for them to address. And so when people come inside, not only do we have to be here to support their transition if they've been used to living outdoors in the community or living in other spaces to have walls all around them, but also we have to start to address some of the other things that start to we start to uncover as people no longer have to deal with the housing crisis. And so here, we'll just be providing a hand to hold on to. We'll be bringing mental health and substance use support as needed. We'll be doing harm reduction work as needed. We'll, we'll be helping people establish themselves as a part of this community in whatever way they feel comfortable to establish or reestablish social networks so that they can be a thriving member of the community. We'll be supporting people's interests in terms of art, if they wanna work places, if they wanna volunteer places. And so we'll be essentially wrapping our arms around folks that live here and working in tandem with HDSI, I think it is a property management company, um, RMG and everybody else, just to make sure people feel comfortable, they feel safe, they feel at home and they never end up outdoors again. So thank you so much for being here. We're excited. If you're from the community, please be kind to your neighbors because they've been your neighbors anyway, except now they're gonna be indoors. And so we appreciate the collaboration in advance from all the people that live in the neighborhood, from the neighborhood councils. And we look forward to being a good partner and a good neighbor um, as Hopix will be here seven days a week. Thank you. Our final speaker really needs no introduction, and, and we've all said so much about her, uh, but she is a, a, a tremendous leader, as I said before, an inspiration, and it's no coincidence this project is named after her. Dolores Huerta, thank you so much for inspiring us all and, and driving us to do more and to make a difference. Welcome you. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I am so honored to be here today and uh, having this uh, apartment building here named uh, named in my name. Uh, in our organization, the Doors Worth Foundation, we work with the unhoused, as our organizer reminds us that we have to use that term. Uh, we provide hot meals for them, and I have been to many uh, places where they live, uh, taking them, uh, providing them with the shoes, uh, providing them with jackets, providing them with blankets. And every time that I go out there and I see that, and we think, no, this is something that needs to be solved. I think all of us, when we pass by and we see the unhoused people in the city, that 
we often, you know, we, we think, what can we do? What can be done? Uh, to, to in this problem that we have that is so prevalent in our in our in our country, not only in Los Angeles, but knowing that here is the solution right here, we are seeing it. That we know that this can happen, but as has been said by the previous speakers, it can only happen when everyone comes together to make it happen. So uh, we need to really uh, not only celebrate this housing uh, development here, but celebrate the leaders that made it happen. So can we give them all an applause, please? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Because we are definitely showing the example of, of government coming together, of good governance, you know, of the private sector coming together. You know, Hillary Clinton once said, it takes a village to, uh, to, to raise a child. Well, I think we also have to say it takes a village to make sure that the unhoused do have a place to live. And we know that when they're unhoused, then of course, they're going to have health issues. I mean, who would not have, any of us had to live on the street for a long time, we would definitely have health issues. And so again, let's thank Kaiser Permanente also for being a really great contributor to make this happen. And of course, what can we say about, about our mayor? You know, Karen Bass, you know, when she ran, she said this was going to be her top priority, and she has made it happen. Let's give her another applause. <laughs> and also for the vision of Council Member Curran Price. Uh, I was so happy to be here a couple of years ago, and to see this happen at such speed, I think that is another thing that we have to think about and be thankful for. So today I think this is a great celebration, and uh, it is, of course, the example of what can happen when all sectors, all sectors of our society come together to make sure that, and I'm going to use this word, you know, the indigenous people, when they meet you, they say, hello, relative. <laughs> they say, hello, relative. If we can think of every unhoused person as our relative, as our relative, I think that gives the impetus to say that we really have to move with as much speed as we can to make sure that many, many more people can uh, be housed. And, and tonight, I think all of us can go to bed happy tonight to say we know for sure because we have seen this. We have seen the good governance that makes it work, that we can see this happen today, that at least some more people will be off the street and into a, a place where they can be safe and, and they can be clean and, and all of the other things that we need to do. So working together. I know it's going to happen. I want to thank all of you for being here, all of us for celebrating uh, this really great event. And of course, what do we say? Uh, as President Obama said, can we make this happen? We say, yes, we can. Si se puede. But, okay. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Isn't she great? A real shero, a real angel. Don't you agree? We have a special presentation. Let me just, uh, first of all, just acknowledge again the, 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 the collaborative support, uh, certainly from uh, the city family making this happen. We referenced DWP, Building and Safety, uh, Planning, uh, and, and others. Uh, Hopix, of course, uh, is uh, our go-to organization in, in this community. We appreciate uh, that support. Team Price was uh, uh, on this case, too. Uh, Marissa Alcrevez, uh, Sherilyn Correa, uh, Curtis, uh, Curtis Ernest, James Westbrook, uh, Xavier's out here, uh, Joel. We just really appreciate uh, the collaboration, Dee Dee. Let's give it up again for those. And we couldn't let this day pass without acknowledging a special birthday. Uh, the, the mayor mentioned she was in Sacramento last week uh, celebrating the birthday of Dolores Huerta, uh, who was 93 years young on April the 10th. So let's give it up. And we have a special a special uh, presentation for you. <laughs> and I think we're going to break into song, gang. So happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Dolores Huerta. Happy birthday to you. All right.
So, friends and neighbors, that uh, concludes the press conference. I think we're going to do a cutting. Okay, countdown. Three, two, one.